Hi and welcome to another video analysis with the Dead Ball Area and Rugby Dump Coaching. As with the crossfield bomb, the grabber kick is one of the most effective ways to penetrate the modern game's defensive structures. But whereas the high kick is often used to turn a compressed defence and isolate defenders, the grabber is better placed to penetrate and turn a defence that has maintained its width but thinned out. Here we can see two excellent examples of it in use with first Nonu threading it through against France for Julian Surveyor to dot down and then Quaid Cooper pulling a no-look grubber kick out of the bag for Drew Mitchell to score. A team that uses this kick a lot though is Saracens. In their recent European Cup match against Iono, Chris Ashton scored two excellent tries from grubber kicks, so we're going to have a quick look at both these tries, starting with Saracens' second try of the game. Iono have a tendency to defend with a lot of width, keeping as many people in the front line as possible, leaving minimal sweepers in behind. And expecting this, I feel Saracens came out with a tactic to play the ball in behind when faced with a wide rushing defence, looking to exploit the slow turning Oyano defence. We saw the kick used in the first minute of the game, when off a turnover ball Barrett opts for the grabber kick through, rather than allowing his wide runners to become targets for the on rushing defence. It's actually a poor kick and nothing comes of it, but five minutes later Owen Farrell opts to use the grubber kick to the corner again. This time it's cleaned up by Blanc, the Oyano scrum half, but I think we're starting to see it's something Saracens are definitely looking to exploit. Now, if we fast forward to the half hour mark, Farrell again fires the ball through for Ashton to collect and go in untouched. The build up for this is from a normal Saracens attack pattern. Like most teams, they flow across the pitch and then they work this almost zigzag attack pattern left and right down one side of the pitch, making sure they keep the INO defence constantly retreating. It also pulls the core of defence across towards this further of the pitch, leaving the outside defenders slightly more stretched than they would normally want to be. As the ball comes across, we can see Savis fix the defence with one final punch group and then Farrell slots in behind the blockers to act as a slider option for Barrett. Farrell comes around the corner and fixes Busse. As he turns in, leaving Vanicolo defending good and Ashton, he puts the kick through. If we cut back, we can see Ashton has kept his whip and as soon as Farrell receives the ball, he's indicating the kick is on. Seeing this, Farrell drills it through end over end that Ashton collects and scores. It's a brilliant kick by Farrell, and if we again swap the angle we can see how he just stabs the ball through, topping the kick to get that rolling end over end motion which is key. Now that end over end motion means at some point the ball will pop up into the air, where it will depend on how hard he's kicked it, and as Ashton has stayed wide he can adjust his run to suit the kick. For example, watch how he tracks in and then out, gets low and patiently collects the ball at the right moment. It's a great try, very clinically taken. And then again we see this tactic come to fruition in the second half when from an attacking scrum Wigglesworth drags the defence across dabbing through a grubber kick for Ashton to again collect and score. Again we can see that it's in that 15 metre channel attacking that right corner and that Ransom and Ashton both know the kick is an attacking option here. Both run hard attacking lines that keep their opposite number interested and once Wigglesworth sees them sat down he stabs the ball through. Again, it's a lovely try, and this type of kick through is a great tactic for any team that's struggling to break down an aggressive and wide defence. But what I really like about both these tries is the level of communication from Ashton as to when the attacking kick is on. It shows that while I don't believe this is a specific set play as such, it's certainly something Saracens would have been practising a lot. Also, key in both Saracens' tries is the fact that runners come from deep, not signalling the kick through to the defenders. Additionally, Saracens give them some space to work in, with the first kick coming on the Iron 22 where there is some depth to the defence. The second is still quite far out, leaving space for Ashton to come through and exploit. Now, the grabber kick is something I feel has fallen out of favour in recent times, as teams and coaches see kicking as a negative tactic. But when used properly, it's a very effective way to penetrate a tackle line that has rushed up, looking to shut down a team's wider attacking play. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Twitter and Facebook.